This morning, I'm glad to share the word of God with you. How many of you are happy this morning? Can I see your hand? Wave your hand and say a big hallelujah. hallelujah. I want a Pentecostal hallelujah. hallelujah. Wow, that's getting better. I hope before I preach, the hallelujahs will get stronger and louder and wonderful. Amen? Amen. Okay, I like some life in the church. I don't like to preach to a silent church. It's like preaching in a graveyard. I like to preach to a church that is full of life and powerful. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to speak to you how to prepare the church for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. The events that are happening all around us point to us one thing for a sure. That we are living in the last days. All the predictions that Jesus gave about the end times in the Gospels, they are happening in front of our eyes. I have been young and I'm getting old now, but I have never seen all these prophecies being fulfilled in front of my eyes, one by one, so fast. The beginning of this decade, coronavirus started, 2020. Two years we suffered. After that, there has been a lot of wars, famines, plagues, earthquakes. Every day an earthquake somewhere. All these things say, Jesus is standing at the doorstep. The continual tension that's in the nation of Israel, the nation of the Middle East, we don't know. When will the third world war break out? When will Iran attack Israel or all the other neighboring countries join together, come against the nation of Israel? We never know. But we are living at the very tip of it. Any time, third world war might break. So, the coming of the Lord is sooner than we expect. Some people are praying, Lord, don't come soon. I have not married it. Please come after I get married. Some people are praying, Lord, I want to build a house and have a good life. Please don't come. Whether you build your house or not, whether you get married or not, Jesus will come certainly at the appointed time. Amen? Amen. So if you want to get married, get married soon. Okay. As I search the media, the world leaders are talking about the great reset by 2030. Before 2030, the world leaders like World Health Organization, World Eco Economic Forum, UNO, all the other big people have gathered together and have declared 23 agendas for 2030. You can go into their website and find out what are they planning. Some of the plans for 2030 is one world government, one uh, currency for the whole nation, cashless society, and so many other things. All the worldly wealthy people and people of power are gathering and scheming many devices to control the population of the world and the governance. And... Uh, the AI technology is becoming very popular. Through that, they want to control everything the humans are doing. And more and more robots are coming. Soon the robots will replace the, replace the human beings. So many things are happening unimaginable. All these things say, Jesus is coming back very soon. When we talk about the end days, we are not talking about doom and gloom. We are not frightening you, but it's a great joy for a child of God and say, come Lord Jesus, even so come Lord. We are waiting for you. We are looking forward for the heavenly bridegroom. Our heart resonates with joy and say, Lord Jesus, we have been waiting for your coming so long. We are waiting for you to come and take us to the heavenly home. That's the hope of every Christian. Are you really happy that Jesus is going to come back very soon? Yes. Look at your neighbor and ask them, are you ready? Are you ready? Huh? Are you excited? Yes. 
Oh, I don't see the excitement here. Something is wrong if you're not excited. Hey man, I am excited. My dad used to preach that he will come in his days, but he couldn't see that coming. But I believe Jesus will come before I die. Hey Amen. That means the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, I believe it's verse 11, Apostle Peter is saying, what manner of people we should be in the light of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. How should we be ready, getting ready? How should the church be? How should we get ready for the coming of the Lord? This morning I want to give you three important characteristics of the end time church as to how we should prepare for the coming of the Lord. The first point, the first Characteristics of the end time church. Firstly, the end time church will be an evangelizing church. Everybody say evangelizing. The end time church will be an evangelistic church, not the evangelistic church, evangelistic church. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14, Jesus himself said these important words. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Amen. When will the end come? Once the is huh? all over the nations. When this gospel is preached to every nation, when everyone hears the gospel, Jesus said, the end will come. So how can we prepare for the coming of Jesus? How can we hasten the coming of Jesus? By preaching the gospel to every ethnic group, to every person, to every village, to every nation, to everyone. When we declare that Jesus is God, he died for us on the cross of Calvary, that's the way we prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus. I believe before the coming of the Lord Jesus, two important things will happen. One, there will be a great end time harvest. Many millions and millions of people will receive Jesus Christ as the personal savior. There will be a great big harvest all over the world. The second thing is, before the coming of the Lord, Jesus will pour out his Holy Spirit upon all the flesh as he promised in Joel chapter 2 verse 29. The Spirit of the Lord will be poured upon the church. There will be a great move of the Holy Spirit. There will be great revival. Amen. Thank you. You clap the hands. I like it. You can clap again. Amen. Oh, that's good. Oh. Wonderful, it's catching up. Yeah, the revival is coming now. Amen. So before the coming of the law, there will be a great revival. So the end time church, the first sign of the coming of the Lord is evangelism. There will be a spirit of evangelism in the church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ will go forward to fulfill the great commission of the Lord to all the places, every nook and corner. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached to every ethnic group and making disciples of all the nations. Preaching the gospel in every unreached areas, in every unreached villages, through crusades, through gospel meetings, through friendship evangelism, through power evangelism, through different means, the gospel shall be preached to everyone. In the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 21 it says, And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. That was Paul's desire. Paul said, hey, I want to take the gospel to all the nations. 
Where the name of the Jesus, where the name, where the kingdom of God is not preached, proclaimed, where no one has heard about the gospel, I want to go and declare to them that there is a God who is alive in the soul. He is living. He is the true God. He died for you. That was the desire of Apostle Paul. In this world, there is a population of 8 billion people. Maybe about 4 billion people are Christians or hear the gospel or would have done. But nearly 50% of the population have not heard the name of Jesus. They have not heard the good news of the gospel. Many of these 50% people are living in the 10 by 40 windows. 10 by 40 windows, if you take the world map and look at the 1040 window, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, all the African nations or the uh, Arabian nations come under the 1040 window. Many of them have not heard the gospel. We are having 4th of June, the election results will be declared. But during this general election, if you go into some villages, and talk about Jesus, they'll say, is Jesus standing for this year's election? I will not cast my vote for him because that MP, MLS never visited our area. They have never put the road. Such is the ignorance of the people of the world, even in India today. They have not heard the name of Jesus. My mother, late mother Ruth, she was a great evangelist. She was a great apostle. She'll go into the tribal villages. She will take our Bible college girl students. Early morning, 5.30, she'll wake up and go to the mountains. And about 6.37, she'll take the drum and play the drum and sing the song and walk through the villages. And suddenly all the tribal people will come out of the village and they will gather in a public place. My mother's favorite song is, There is power, power, power in the blood of Jesus. As she sings that song, all the village people will gather around and there is power in the blood. Immediately the demons will start to manifest. And my mother will cast out all the demons. She will preach the gospel and many gods said, like that, she proclaimed the gospel for the very first time in more than 100 villages and many gave their heart to Jesus. Okay, nobody clapped their hands. Come on. When you hear good things, you need to clap the hands. That's the challenge to you this morning. The church of the Lord Jesus need to advance into new frontiers, new areas. The church of Jesus Christ has to be adventurous and moving in the power of the Holy Spirit, moving into new territories, into new ministries, into new heights where the gospel of Jesus has not been preached before. The end time church will be adventurous. The end time church will have the spirit of evangelism. The end time church will have the spirit of pioneering. It will have the spirit of Caleb. It will have the spirit of faith. What did Caleb say? Do you know the name Caleb in the Old Testament? In the Old Testament, there was a man called Caleb. You know how old he was? He was older than me. How old was he? 85. If anybody is here 85, can you lift your hand? Oh, we're all very young. But many of you look like old. <laughs> because you're not shouting hallelujah. You're sitting like old people. But Caleb, at the age of 85, he said to Joshua, Hey Joshua, I am 85, still I have the strength of 45, give me that mountain. Even if there are the Anakites, even if there are the giants, I will chase them out and I will possess those nations for the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, how old are you? Huh? If Caleb, an old man, at the age of 85, 
if we can take the challenge and say i give me that mountain i will possess that mountain for jesus why not you ask god for your street for your family for your household for your relations and lift your hand and say jesus give me my people come on lift your hand give me my family ah uh, many of you are lifting your hand is your family saved is your family coming to church is your husband saved is your wife saved is your all the relations kith and kin saved are they worshiping jesus do they know jesus have you witnessed to them about jesus? Jesus, have you told them how good God is? If not, sorry for telling. Shame on you. Yeah. If you get a new Nike shoe, you put it and make a show fashion, fashion show. You put your new dress and parade everyone. Hey. Hey. how much good things jesus has done for you he has healed you he has forgiven your sin he has given you eternal life he has made you look so good and nice why not tell about jesus to other people when a man got delivered after the demon possession he wanted to follow jesus he thought if i go with jesus i'll get free food Jesus will take the five loaves and give me food and I will have place to stay but Jesus said no no don't come with me go and tell what I have done to you all the people he went around declaring about the love of Jesus in 10 cities that's called decopolis amen? amen if Jesus saved you you can't keep it quiet you need to tell others that so you can prepare for the coming of jesus apostle paul says woe unto me if i preach not the gospel the love of jesus constrains me to witness about jesus to others deal moody the great preacher every day he decide i want to tell someone about jesus one day he did not find anybody to tell jesus because everybody told but in the night time he was restless oh i need to tell and one man was walking before him oh i have not yet talked to him about jesus so he was running after them he knew about deal moody so when he saw deal moody coming he ran to run fast and deal moody went fast and he caught up with him and said hey receive jesus receive him that man said mind your business You know what did Moody say? This is my business. My business is to tell everyone about Jesus. Yeah man, have you told about Jesus to the one who brings milk to you? Have you told about Jesus to the store where you go and buy provisions? Are you ashamed to share about Jesus to your friends to those who are studying with you in your college have you shared Jesus in your workplace have you invited them come to the church along with me that's what God wants you to be Jesus said you shall be my witnesses can i hear an amen, amen. lift your hands say i shall be a witness of Jesus You are the light of Kaimutu city. Jesus wants to shine through you. He wants to reveal to you like Caleb, we must say, Lord, give me more anointing. Give me more power. Give me more souls. Give me more people. Give me more finances. I want to be a witness for you. I want to take the enemy's territories for your kingdom. that's the end time church a soul winning church the early believers wherever they went they witnessed to everyone they saw about the resurrection power of jesus they met from house to house they opened their houses and the houses were open for the gospel they invited the neighbors and their house they celebrated jesus ask your neighbor have you got a house Huh? Have you ever opened your house, invited your friends to celebrate Jesus? I'll give you a clue. 
Next time you celebrate your birthday, all those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries, their birthdays today, make a decision. I am going to arrange a Matthew party in my house. Do you know what is Matthew party? Matthew invited all his friends, made a big feast and told them about Jesus. Why not you do that this month, this year, when you are celebrating a special occasion? Just don't have a jolly good party of talking and eating, but share what Jesus done for you. Be bold, be daring. Every believer need to witness for Jesus. You know, recently in Tamil Nadu, when we celebrated the day of Pentecost, about one crore gospel tracts were given as a witness to this Tamil Nadu alone. Amen. Even in our church, more than 30,000 gospel tracts, our church distributed. But all over Tamil Nadu, in many churches, they gave the tracts. Church is not called to be a dancing club. Church is not called to be a singing club. It's a rescuing club. It's a place where we need to rescue souls from the pit of hell. There should be a fervor, a zeal for church growth, for evangelism, for soul winning. Take your every opportunity to tell some others about Jesus. If you read in the Bible, it says, Lydia and her household. The jailer and the household, they came to church. The Bible doesn't say, Mr. Sam came to church. Or Mr. Abraham or Paul came to church. And Bible says, they came with their families. My challenge to you this morning is, is your household saved? Who is your household? You take a piece of paper, write when you are Going to send an invitation letter, invitation, a wedding invitation card. Who will you think of? You will think of your mama, chiti, tata, party, chitapa, chiti. Huh? All the kids and kids you will think. They are your household. Write a list and tell them, how I shared the gospel with them. The early church witnessed about Jesus, boldly declared Jesus. Fields are ready for harvest. We need to tell everyone about Jesus. Recently in California, I think my wife told you last week, about 12,000 people were baptized in one day. And then when I heard that vision, I had a vision in my heart. By next Pentecost, I want to see 3,000 people baptized through IPA churches all over India. Amen. That will be the beginning. That will be the move of the Holy Spirit. Ask your neighbor, have you taken water baptism? Huh? Pastor, this is why we don't like you to come and preach to us. You ask too many questions. You ask too many personal questions. Yeah, I need to ask because I want you to come to heaven with me. After attending the Bethel City Cathedral, I don't want you to tell Jesus, Pastor, Jesus in Bethel City Cathedral, nobody told me about baptism. And Jesus will say, that's why I sent my servant to talk to you about water baptism. You hear the gospel, why did you not obey? Huh? Why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> if you are ready, I can provide you Gowns or lungis or dhotis or shirts or t-shirts, you can be baptized even today. Or next week, come ready. Because Jesus is coming soon. He will not wait for you. See, when you get saved, that is your passport. When you take baptism, that's your visa stamp. You might have received Jesus. You need to go to heaven. You need visa to enter to heaven. Otherwise, you cannot go to heaven. Amen? So every believer, every soul, every man of God, every woman of God, everyone reach out to one, everyone win one. I heard a story of a dog. A dog was limping. 
and a poor veterinary doctor veterinarian saw the dog limping he took pity on it and he took it to his hospital and bandaged its wounds and he healed the dog the dog was very thankful to the doctor he wagged his tail and just smiled and went next day in front of the doctor's house there was 20 dogs waiting for the doctor see how grateful the dog was how joyfully it went and witnessed to all the dogs that were sick and brought all the dogs if jesus done something good for you why not tell someone about jesus there was a barber hat cutter in england one day he announced the first 10 people who come to my barber shop i'll give a free haircut so the next day an englishman went he had a free haircut he did not know it was a free haircut but he got the haircut free he asked how much is free today you came first so he went and brought a flower bouquet and said thank you sir for your service the next day an american came he got a free haircut and he asked how much he said so first one is free sir so it's a free haircut for you so he went and brought a bag of crispy donut and gave him the next day an indian came he had a free haircut you know what happened next day you understand 10 people were standing <laughs> that's the joy of being an indian we are good in telling others what we get free salvation is free healing is free jesus is free why not we tell jesus is still alive okay i'm still at my first point let me move to my second point secondly end time church will be a holy spirit full powerful church it will be a holy ghost spirit filled church ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of god might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places that's the purpose of god why is the church the word of god says through the church the power of god shall be manifested to the powers in this world to the powers of darkness god has chosen the church as the instrument to reveal to release the power of god who is the church huh you are the church only 20 people said i am the church others they are don't know they are building blocks still Jesus is not coming back for a weak church for a defeated church for a crippled church for a sick church for a wishy-washy church Jesus is going to come back for a church that is alive the church that is powerful a church that is vibrant the church that is speaking in tongues the church that is kicking the devil the church that is pulling down the strong walls of the enemy a church that is rejoicing and joyful and powerful the end time church will be mountain moving devil kicking holy ghost full history making and radical church no in the early church when the believers met one another they did not say praise the lord or hallelujah they looked at the neighbor and said have you been filled with the holy spirit amen can you look at your neighbor and ask them some people are very afraid to look at the neighbor it seems they had a quarrel before coming to the church maybe they borrowed some money and they are not giving back that's why they don't want to look at the neighbor's face come on give your neighbor a big smile they are your family and say have you received the baptism of the holy spirit pastor that's why i told you early please don't ask such type of questions you are only a preacher you just preach you do your job and go don't bring us trouble that's my job to bring the trouble yeah man 
as my job to ask is to stir you up. Amen. If I just preach and go, I'm just a college professor. Many students sit in the college and they do their own thing. And the poor lecture, they just, he just comes and speaks his lecture he's paid for. I'm not paid for. I'm your father. I love you. I want the best for you. God wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The early church asked that question, Are you speaking in tongues? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Paul admonished the early church and he said in the book of Ephesians, Hey, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in psalms and hymns and praising and worshipping God. That's the word of God's admonition for every family. Don't be drunk with wine, but be drunk with the heavenly wine, with the new wine of God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. Every day, speak in tongues. Did you speak in tongues today? Huh? Somebody are going to sleep now. This pastor is asking, let me close my eyes. I won't look at that person. But somebody, oh dear, why did I come to church this morning? You are in the right place. God is speaking to you. Amen. Every day be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every day speak in tongues. Every day rejoice in the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit gives you power. He gives you wisdom. He gives you strength. Every day when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, your job will be easy. He will give you guidance. He will give you direction. He will help you in all your business. Holy Spirit is not just tongue talking. He is the anointer. He is my friend. He is my good God, He heals me, He sentences me, He teaches me, He guides me, He is my comforter, He is my strength, He is my restorer. What a great God we have. Come on, church, lift your hand and just begin to speak in tongues for a few minutes. This church needs to speak in tongues. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need to ask God, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. I want to receive that power. I want to receive that anointing. That's what Jesus promised. That's why I shout. I'm 70 years old. I'm not tired. Why? It's not my energy. It's the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Shall we lift our hands and begin to pray in tongues for a few minutes? I need to hear your voice. Come on, come on. Everybody who received the baptism, come on, begin to speak louder, louder, louder. Shaka, randa, nahanduna, rika, balanduna, moshaka. When they prayed, the place was shaken with the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to open your mouth. You need to drink of the Holy Spirit. You need to pray alone and say, Holy Spirit, I love you. I love you. I want more. I want more of your power. I want more of your anointing. I want more of your unction. Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me. Let my cup run over with the blessings of Jesus. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit will begin to operate in your life. When they prayed, the place was shaken with the power of God. The church must return to the same Pentecostal experience of the early church. We need that Pentecostal power again. Today's church has lost that power of the Holy Spirit. Today's church, many don't speak in tongues. They just come, sit in the church, sing a few songs, and they hear a good sermon and go. No, that's not the church. A church needs to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. The end time church should reveal the power of God. In Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Why? Because the power of God unto salvation. Amen. 
Jesus is not going to come back for a dead church. He is not going to come back for a lifeless corpse. Church of Jesus is alive. The God whom I know is still powerful, is still healing, is still doing miracles. The God I know, he raises the dead. The God I know is still touching lives and transforming the lives of people. Can I hear an amen this morning? What was the power of the early apostolic church? Whenever the apostolic believers or the leaders went around, people were healed. Demons were cast out. The Bible says even when the shadows fell upon people, they were healed. Even they took the handkerchiefs from the leaders and put it on the sick people, they were healed. That was the power of the early church. Amen? Amen. Lift your hand and say, Lord, we need that power again. That's my prayer, dear children. That's my hunger for God. God, if you can do it in those early days, we want you to do it again. The end time church should experience the same miracle power of the Holy Spirit that they experience. Lord, when I walk, people should be healed. When I touch, people should be healed. When I speak, people should be healed. Those who touch my garment, they should receive the power of the Holy Spirit. My God is not a dead God. Holy Spirit is not changed. It's the same Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came on the first early church, it's the same Holy Spirit today. If you are hungry, if you ask God, He will give you that power. Amen. The apostolic church, early church was a cube with the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. It will break through into enemy's territories. Pulling down the strongholds of the enemy. It will break every bondage, every sickness, every curse, every attack of the enemy. It will break every yoke of the enemy. That's my prayer. Lord, give us that power back again. Would you lift your hand and say to God, Lord, give us that power again. Give us that power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, move in our midst once again in unprecedented ways, of God. Tell God, I'm hungry for you. I'm thirsty for you. I'm not just satisfied with the routine church. If you're hungry, then you'll begin to see the move of the Holy Spirit. If you're asking God, you'll begin to see the power of God being manifested. That's my prayer, God, if you can do it in the early church. Church, do it in our church. Do it in Bethel City Cathedral. Do it in our lives. Do it through our every leader. Do it through our every usher. Do it through our every church people. Father, reveal your power. Reveal your glory in Jesus' name. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, why should I need to go to a doctor? Why should I go to an operation when I have a living God in our midst? He is still alive. He's still doing miracles. He's still healing. He is still the Jehovah Jireh. He is the Jehovah Rapha. He declares I am the Lord that healeth thee. Uramahasa Kalatana Rikabalashaka. If you are sick this morning, the power of God is here in the house of God to heal you from every ailment. You don't need to go after the doctors. I am not against the doctor. But I have a good God who is alive. We have the power to heal you. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. I heard of a story in Africa. A man of God was walking in the street. In his meeting, people were healed. As he was walking in the street, people went and touched his garments. They were healed immediately. The same power will be released through our church. That's the end time revival. If you are hungry, if you ask God, God will pour His Holy Spirit upon everyone. In our church service on one Friday, I was speaking a healing service. I prayed for people. I did not touch people. I just had a mass prayer. I don't know whether they have the picture of that lady. A lady about 75 years old called Elizabeth. She came. She was in the meeting. After the meeting, she came and testified. 
Pastor, I was bent down. I could not lift my head up. I was bent down for more than 40 years. But in that meeting, Holy Spirit touched me. I got healed. And now she's up more than 75 years old. She took the bell and she was there in, uh, last week when I was preaching in the Tamil service. She came up and said, I am the lady who was healed by the Holy Spirit. And she showed us how she was bent down, how she could not lift up. God healed her. Our God is still alive. We heard a testimony in the English service some weeks ago. A father was attending the English uh, Tamil service. The daughter was attending. She had seven kind of boils or tumors in her neck. And the doctor said, maybe we need to take the operation. But when they hear the power of God in the house of God, God healed her completely. Amen. Wonderful God. This morning I prayed for a lady. She said, I had cancer, Pastor. I had cancer in my breast. The doctor said it will spread to the lungs everywhere. You prayed for me. I went and checked. It did not spread to the lungs. Now I'm believing God that even in my breast, that cancer will be healed. My God is alive. Hallelujah. I have seen testimonies after testimonies of healing and miracles. How tumors have disappeared. How people who did not have children for many years, God touched the wombs. How God did many miracles. I have personally walked myself into many ICU wars when people were given up for death. I prayed for them. My God has raised them from death. He is still alive. I was in Brazil. I was preaching in a conference, a big conference. And I just gave an altar call for healing. People came and I just prayed a mass prayer. One lady came next day and said, I'm the wife of the chief dental doctor. I, I couldn't use my hands. I couldn't cook food for my husband. I couldn't wash vessels because my hand, I could not put my hand in water. But in the meeting when you prayed, I lifted my hand to God, said, God, would you heal my hand? After that, I went home. I cleaned all the vessels. I cooked the food. I have no pain. Once again, God restored healing to my hands. I went to Tanzania, preached the gospel. Many demons screamed out and came out to people. Many witchcraft doctors came out and testified. People who could not speak, people who could not do many things, they were wonderfully healed. My God is alive. If you are sick this morning, His power is present here. Only believe. Tell your neighbor, only believe. Only believe. If you believe, Something will happen to you. If you believe, the power of God will touch you. You not just need to stretch your hand and say, Jesus, you are here. I want you to touch my body. I want that healing. If you are hungry for God, if you believe God, He can manifest His miracle in your life. And through you, God can use you. Thirdly, the end time apostolic church will be a perfecting church. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, it says, Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Jesus is not coming back for a dirty church, for a sinful church, for a carnal church, a church that is divided, a, a church that is immature, a church that is still fighting back, a church that is filthy, is coming back for a holy church, for a pure church, for a sinless church, for a perfected church. Today, holiness is not being preached in the house of God. Today, there's many different kind of doctrines that are being preached. Money doctrine, prosperity teaching, all the other kind of wrongful teachings. People today do not have a sense of the holiness of the God they worship. I have heard preachers preaching, today I'm going to pray for you. Money will come in your pocket. Money will come in your bank account. My God is not a magician. He doesn't want to do miracles. If he does that, then all the banks will go bankrupt. 
he gives you power to work and earn money he is a wise god he is a good god he gives you strength he gives you ability he blesses your hands that's how god does it today there's so many kind of wrong teachings live the life as you want jesus forgives you he died for all the sins that you're going to come in so live a free life the grace teaching wrong that's why we tell you don't go here and there don't go after all the youtube preachings many nonsense is being preached in many of the youtubes if you listen to all the preachers in the youtube you'll get confused that's why we say to you be plugged in a local church be rooted be grounded this is an apostolic church we believe in the fundamental doctrines of the word of god we preach the word of god we warn you we don't preach to you to make you comfortable we don't preach to you to get your money we don't preach to you so that you just enjoy the preaching we preach to the uncorruptible incorruptible truths of god which will help you to grow in holiness grow in sanctification whether you like it or not we preach it that's why some of you are not smiling whether you smile or not smile i preach it because that's our calling because we love you we want you to be taken in the rapture when the trumpet of the lord shall sound then when i hear the trumpet sound i need to be ready to fly away with jesus are you ready are you practicing holiness living in holiness hating sinful life hating the corrupted life i don't want to be involved in sin i don't want to be involved in lust in phone or in in and uh, seeing naked pictures in in living a dirty kind of life no i am the temple of the holy spirit jesus lives in me i don't want to defile this body i am this time for jesus i want to live a holy pure life well i don't want to preach more because the time is so shall we all stand up and say lord prepare me for the coming of the lord your coming is soon I want to be ready for your coming my dear brother my dear sister I poured out my heart to you my concern is for you are you ready for the coming of the lord look at your neighbor and ask them are you ready are you ready if jesus comes today will you be taken in the rapture are you saved are you baptized have you been filled with the holy spirit Are you walking a holy life? Have you received the power of the Holy Spirit? These are very important questions. Don't just go away walking. Oh, I have heard a good sermon. Pastor was funny. He spoke. He was different. No. Make a decision. If you've not yet given your heart to Jesus, today is the day. Say yes, Lord. I want to turn my life to you. I want to turn away from sin. I want to turn away from the world I want to give my life to you I want to take water baptism I want to be a soul winner I want to win souls I want to evangelize next week when I come I want to bring some families to the house of God I want to be a witness for you I want to be filled with the holy spirit I want to be a vessel of honor to release your power and glory every head bowed down every eyes closed If you are here this morning say pastor I'm not yet given my heart to Jesus I'm not ready for the coming I want to give my life to Jesus I want to take water baptism I want to accept Jesus If you're here this morning if you're not yet ready for the coming of the Lord wherever you are just lift your hand and say yes Lord it's me I give my heart to you come into my life I want to obey you and take water baptism I want to follow you If you're here, if you've not yet made that wonderful decision, I just give you one more moment. If you've never said yes to Jesus, wherever you are, just lift your hand and say, yes, that's me. I want to give my heart to Jesus. Shall we all lift our hand and say, Jesus, prepare me for your coming. Make me a soul winner. 
fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let me be a carrier of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Loving Father, I preach your word to your people. They have heard your word. And I pray that the word of God will begin to work in the heart and lives. They'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. They'll be a witnessing church. They'll be a powerful church. They'll be a holy church. Prepare for the coming of Jesus. Bless them today. Let the words that they hear this morning continue to work in their lives. Send them with your joy, with your peace, and with your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Be blessed of the Lord. Amen. Our ushers, leaders are available. If you want to talk to them, you can talk to them. They'll pray with you. They will help you to get to know more about Jesus.